King and Savior draweth nigh. O come, let us adore him. Let us pray. Lord, grant thy light that being rid of the darkness of, the, of our hearts, we may come to the true light, which is Christ. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the Son, now and forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which thy son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to, nudge, to judge both the living and the dead, we shall rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our hearing, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and, by, and the comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First lesson is written in the third chapter of the book of Malachi, beginning at the first verse. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, said the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings of righteousness to the Lord. And the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker and his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who cross aside the sojourner. Do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 126. We'll read it responsibly by whole verse. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with songs of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the land. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping in Bearing the seed for sowing shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. The second lesson is written in the fourth chapter of the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the 
Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of, his, of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required as stewards that they be found trustworthy. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. And each one will receive his commendation from God. I have applied all these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, brothers, that you may learn by us not to go beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up in favor of one against another. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. Without us, you have become kings. And would that you did reign, so that we might share the rule with you. For I think that God has exhibited as apostles, as last of all, like men sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To the present hour, we hunger and thirst. We are poorly dressed and buffeted and homeless. And we labor, working with our own hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we entreat. We have become and are still like the scum of the world, the refuse of all things. I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you have countless guides in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then, be imitators of me. That is why I sent you Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach them everywhere in every church. Some are arrogant, as though I were not coming to you. But I will come to you soon, if the Lord wills, and I will find out not the talk of these arrogant people, but their power. For the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. What do you wish? Shall I come to you with a rod, or with love, and a spirit of gentleness? The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks God. be to God. The Lord be with you. And with us. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Lord be with you. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Eturia and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In the name of the one true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Please be seated. It's great to be with you, be with you here this morning. Um, you're getting my retread from yesterday as far as my sermon. I hope it speaks to you. May God's uh, work be present. In, in my effort here. Somewhere around the year 700 BC, the word of God was spoken to his prophet Isaiah. The word was, and I quote, a voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, 
Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. And the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall, shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. <coughs> this is the actual quote from Isaiah 40 that's referred to by St. Luke in today's Gospel <coughs> passage. In it, God was calling his people to repentance in preparation for the coming of the Lord. These people were God's chosen people. And their people, they were people in exile. They were in Babylon. They were in the wilderness. They weren't in their homeland. And they are being exhorted to repent of their sinful ways in preparation of going home to their holy land and to live godly and righteous lives. The call is to make God's path clear through their repentance of their sins. Did they do it? Well, some did, but many didn't. And scripture tells us that many in indeed did ignore the prophecy and continued to live in their sinful ways. So God had to continue to work on them a lot of times. You might have noticed uh, some slightly different wording, if you were listening very carefully, between the quote I just gave and the one that we heard in today's gospel. The Isaiah passage says, A voice cries... And then it says, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight the desert in the, in the desert a highway for our God. The gospel passage says, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Why is this different? Why would Luke and the other uh, gospel writers change it? Well, they really didn't. The quote that they use, the wording that they use, comes from the Septuagint, which was the Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures. And that was the common one to use. So they were just quoting what they knew as scripture. Our translations also go back to the Hebrew, but we have multiple translations, as you know, and they come out a little bit differently. Um, hopefully, even maybe a little more accurately. But we don't know that for sure. Isaiah's actual prophecy focuses on the need for preparation to be made while the people are in exile, in the wilderness. The Gospel version seems to focus more on the prophetic action being made in the wilderness, that all this is happening in the wilderness. These differences really don't add up to much, particularly when we view them through the lens of their function as prophecy for the coming of John the Baptist. And that's where we're going. We're told that the word of God, uh, we're, we're told that the word of God that called him to the wilderness uh, was what called him to his ministry. But he was indeed also a voice in the wilderness. He was uh, a voice among people who had been lost. They were not following God. And the people were drawn out, drawn into the wilderness to hear his word and to prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. So what's meant by this? Well, when a king would come out into the wilderness or into the desert, before he would come, he would send his minions out to clear the path, to remove any debris from the roads, to make it so that it would be more easily passable. In this case, what's being said is the clearing of the Lord's path was to be by means of the acknowledgement of one's sin, their repentance, turning away from it, and a commitment to righteous living in God's will. In St. Luke's Gospel passage today, as well as in the Gospels of Saints Matthew and Mark, John the Baptist is proclaimed to be the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. He is that one that was sent in preparation for the coming of the Lord. John the Baptist was directed by God to call people to prepare for the way of the coming of the Lord. And the preparation was, again, repentance and turning away from their sins and turning to God. But in addition, it was John the Baptist's call to prophecy 
uh, of, to prophesy the imminent coming of the Messiah. He had that extra component that he was called to do. The people came to John for a baptism of repentance as a means of, of preparation. Now, the Jewish people would have been very familiar with baptism because, not because they had been baptized, but because when a proselyte, when somebody wanted to join the Jewish religion, they would be baptized with water as a sign of their cleansing and preparation. But John the Baptist was actually baptizing Jews. They, didn't, they wouldn't have seen the need for their own baptism short of the fact that he proclaimed that it was a necessity in order to move forward in coming to God. And it's, it's important to note that John's baptism with water was really only the sign. It wasn't the act. The most important thing was his call upon them to come to repentance. And the baptism was merely a sign that they would, they would do in order to show that they had uh, come to repentance and turned away from sin. It meant that they had a change of heart. And such a change of heart to righteous living in accordance with God's will was what would cleanse people in preparation for encountering the Lord, the coming King. The water baptism was merely an outward sign. The true act that was being called for was turning away from sin and cleansing oneself in preparation for the King. Indeed, as we know, during his ministry, he prophesied that while his baptism was of water, one greater than he, the Messiah, was coming who would baptize with the Holy Spirit. John's baptism looked forward to the coming of the King. In contrast, our baptism, the rite of baptism that we experience, looks back to the finished work of Jesus Christ and binds us to that. Now Isaiah wasn't the only prophet, um, prophetic voice that was pointing to John the Baptist. The prophet Malachi also prophesied the coming of a herald to come in preparation of the Lord. The book of Malachi that we heard from the first reading is the last book in the Old Testament. And he prophesied in the 5th century BC, a little after Isaiah. And then there was no prophetic voice after him until John the Baptist. God did not speak to his people through prophets until John the Baptist. So there was 400 years that God's pro prophecy was not proclaimed. In today's Old Testament passage, God says through Malachi, Behold, I send a messenger, and he will prepare the way for me. This is seen as a direct prophecy of John the Baptist that John the Baptist fulfilled. But beyond this, it should be noted that Malachi continues, and this is important, that after the messenger prepares the way and the Lord comes, <coughs> it's not going to be roses for everybody. He warns that many who profess to follow God, to be God's people, are, are going to be looking forward to his, and are looking forward to his coming, are going to be somewhat concerned because they're going to find themselves under judgment. He warns that the Lord will come to judge and those who have not feared him and lived in accordance with his will and his commandments will be subject to severe judgment. This happens in the church, too where people feel that they've got it covered, but they refuse to repent and to obey God's commands. In other words, Malachi is also warning the people to repent of their sinful ways and turn to God in preparation of his coming. While Malachi is considered to be the last prophet of the Old Testament, John the Baptist is considered to be the last prophet of the Old Covenant. He was the one to proclaim and introduce the arrival of Jesus Christ as Messiah. And Jesus instituted a new covenant. John's call to repentance was not only preached in the wilderness, but it was preached to a people who were in the wilderness, a people in exile from God due to their sin. The world in which we live is also a wilderness. We find ourselves surrounded by temptation and evil, and many find themselves in exile from God. Advent is a season of preparation and repentance. 
not only for the celebration of the Lord, our Lord's incarnation, but also for his promised return as king and judge. True Christian living continues to call for repentance and change of heart. We're called to look for God and to seek to see, his, see the world through his eyes of compassion and love. We're called to make our love of God visible in the world through our lives and re that reflect our, his love and demonstrate our obedience to his will. We're called to recognize that we can't overcome sin by ourselves. We need God's grace and forgiveness in order to be cleansed. And just as God offers us forgiveness and grace, we're called to forgive the indiscretions of others in love. But by the great gift of redemption of our Lord, and, and by Jesus Christ and his gift of faith, and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we've been given the means by which we can prepare to look for our Lord and King to come and to meet him in his glory when he returns. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the, the Father of the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate from the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father, whom the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle Paul has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We beseech thee also, so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. And to all thy people, grant thy heavenly grace. And
especially to this <coughs> congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and help us to fulfill thy great commission, making disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that thou hast commanded. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We ask your prayers specifically for Janice Lafazo, Jeff Wenberg, Donna Billick, Matt McGinnis, and Linda Nardone. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life and thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love with charity and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and, hum and make your humble confession to Almighty God devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance, remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that that prevail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Hear what St. John saith. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice unto God.
Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation. Through thy goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation. Through, this, through thy goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the spiritual drink, the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and on earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Or above all. all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right and so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Because thou hast sent thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great glory to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we, most, and we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, 
mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and most humbly beseech thee, beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are, un are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is, is all the honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, Almighty, world without end. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb, o Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb, Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come, to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore a gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and be in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that thou shalt have my room, my room. But, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most, we most heartily thank Thee, for Thou art our God, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and, and thus assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits, by the merits of his most precious, precious death, death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom and with thee, O Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep thy hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.